Hello and welcome to the 16th round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at the Euro Speedway Lausitz. Qualifying on the pole is Tom Delgado with Cale Bernfart Jr. on his outside. They swept the front row by half a second over Preston Bell and Alina Lazareva in row 2. Mark Burt and Gaspar D'Souza in row 3. Gaspar D'Souza's teammate Clay Gibson ran in the Europe race, which just finished a couple hours ago in that race. Uh, Jan Schmidt qualified on the pole with Donnie Olsen on his outside. Uh, Christopher Loxanen, Olsen, and uh, Schmidt would swap the lead early in the going with Olsen uh, really putting on a good show in that Karen Team World Car. After pit stops, however, Olsen's team would drop the ball and he'd fall nine seconds back. However, he'd make almost all of that up. But late in the going, Jan Schmidt would make a move on the inside of his teammate Christopher Loxanen. Uh, he would use that lapped car there, that is uh, Fritz Steiner, he would use that car as a pick, and he would take the lead and he wouldn't look back as Jan Schmidt would take his fourth win of the season here at the Euro Speedway Lausitz. Uh, something unique about that race is they did not use the uh, Super Speedway package, however we brought that here with the PCC Cup Series cars, so they're hitting 220 miles an hour at the end of the straights. It's not quite as extreme as it is at Talladega or 8 Bull, but uh, we will be seeing speeds in excess of 220 miles an hour here today. That's going to make things really interesting. And with that, Delgado and Bernfart lead the field to the green flag as Delgado gets a pretty good jump on the inside there uh, with Bell helping. Looks like Mark Burt's going to try and make it three wide, but he thinks better of it. He backs off, and Tom Delgado starts to pull away just a little bit as Bernfart's stuck on the outside there. Uh, Delgado and Bernfart were the class of the field in qualifying, as I mentioned before, taking the pole and second place by half a second over the rest of the field. Uh, so, looks like that is going to translate over well to race pace, as now Cale Bernfart Jr. has cleared Preston Bell, and he's going to set his sights on uh, Tom Delgado up there. Now, it's very heavily rumored that Bernfart will not be back in this car next season, and that Sam Burkhardt is going to take it over. Uh, so he's doing all that he can right now to keep himself in the field for next year. Uh, all of Team Ben Atkins apparently missed the setup. As you see, uh, Atkins, Ward, and uh, Hewitt are running back here with Nicholas Corradovos. They are uh, all below 35th right now in the running order. So uh, they definitely missed the setup, and it's going to be a long day for them. So now we look back uh, up front. And the top two have already separated themselves by about three seconds by lap five. Uh, Tom Delgado, we know, is leaving that team at the end of the year. And uh, Bernfart Jr. is definitely probably not going to be in that ride after this season. So uh, both drivers have a lot to prove here today to try and get themselves a ride for next year. As your points leader, Ike Durbin, is really struggling here. He's running 28th uh, around lap six of so 125. So... Uh, not really showing a lot of pace early on. Here's Franz Bergman, driver of the number 35. He was ROG Motorsports' fourth driver at the Round of Russia. Uh, Kelly Blackwater was injured in uh, her crash in the Round of Russia. Hope she gets well soon. But Franz Bergman is having an excellent run in his home race. At lap 8, he's running in ninth place. So uh, Franz Bergman, this is his debut and uh, really putting on a pretty strong performance. He is the best running of the ROG Motorsports cars as of right now. Lap 11 and we've got our first lapped car. It's Ramsey Cockiner. Shouldn't really be much of a surprise to you. Uh, Cockiner gets out of the way fairly courteous, uh, but this team has always struggled on these larger ovals and it's definitely showing here today as he goes a lap. He is the first to go a lap down and uh, Vincenzo Focasato is going to be the next car to go a lap down the next lap. Uh, he's had issues with pace all weekend, but at least he's faster than one car, so he can uh, put that down on his resume. As Preston Bell is running in third place, he is the best of the rest right now, and he really needs a good run as Stefan's Racing is in uh, the relegation zone. I believe they're last in points of all the teams, so any good run like this is definitely going to help that team out in uh, trying to stay in the series. Uh, not going to imagine that their drivers are going to stick around if they get demoted to the light series next season. Lap 13 and we've got a battle for the lead as Tom Delgado gets held up by Barney Ward and oh he pulls low into Kale Bernfart Jr. What was Barney Ward doing? As looks like 
Tom Delgado is going to take the lead on the high side once again using Ben Atkins as a pick, but Barney Ward looks completely lost out there as uh, the leaders manage to clear all of the Team Ben Atkins cars. Oh my goodness. As Mark Burt has taken third place away from Preston Bell, and that means that all three Double B Motorsports cars are up in the top ten. Uh, Burt is third, Gifu is fifth, and Barbara Burt is a little further back. You can see there she is in seventh place. So Double B Motorsports looking to take third in the championship away from Team Ben Atkins here today uh, on top of these strong runs. Here's Kyle McWulla in the 52 car. He is the other reserve driver for Paloma Autosport, uh, the other being Clay Gibson. And uh, he's been running on the ovals. He did one previous start this year at Rockingham and uh, had some issues early on, but it looks like he's having a pretty strong run here today. He's up in eighth place, the 2012 PCC Lights Champion, putting on a show here today as Cale Bernfart Jr. making another move to the inside, trying to take the lead using Jerry Myatt as a pick. And he's gonna be able to do so as uh, they're coming up to lap. That's Ike Durbin. So your uh, points leader is going a lap down just uh, past the 1-5th mark of this race. So. That doesn't bode too well for the pace of most of the field. As Bernfart Jr. using the lessons taught to him by his father takes the lead on the inside there. Boy, would Kale Sr. love to see this. As uh, Duncan Cobb's having some issues, he lost a tire on that 79 car, and he's going to pull his car into the pits and lose a couple laps in the process. He was running in 36th place, so a uh, pretty rough day for all of Clayson Enterprises as uh, Alexa Lake is having a pretty good run. She's in the 20 car this week. And Alexa Lake is up in the top 15, having a pretty strong run. Uh, she hasn't really had a lot of success on the road courses in the PCC Light Series, but she's really shown pretty well on the ovals. And uh, Matthews Motorsports team picked her up for these ovals, and she's doing pretty well as Tom Delgado has caught back up to Cale Bernfart Jr. and he's going to take a peek to the inside. We're going to have another battle for the lead here. Uh, just past the one, one fifth mark and they're catching Daniel Sharp there and that's Scott Wollen. And Scott Wollen's going to move high and block Bernfart Jr. and that means that uh, Tom Delgado is going to take the lead once again and we're back and forth up at the front. Bernfart Jr. shoots the gap between Sharp and Wollen back there as Focusado goes another lap down and looks like they're catching a huge gaggle of lapped cars. There's the TBA cars up in here, uh, a couple of the Australian Motorsports cars. There's Kurt Pliskin, uh, Cordova's going a second lap down and it's just an absolute gaggle of cars here. Uh, gonna see how Delgado needles his way through it as he gets jammed up behind Lewis Jones there a little bit. Uh, Cordova's is gonna move high and potentially block here and there goes Jones, and there goes Burnfart Jr. taking the lead. And Delgado clears Cordova's on the high side with ease. But Burnfart Jr. has taken the lead once again as Pliskin gets out of the way. Sapphire Anderson's been a bit slow getting blocked by Barney Ward once again. Oh my goodness, that was nearly an accident. Uh, Anderson got hooked by our teammate there, Lewis Jones. Uh, Anderson's going to move high and let Delgado go by as Bernfart Jr. is already sailing off into the sunset as Barney Ward is blocking three lanes all by himself. Oh my goodness. He nearly just put Delgado into the wall. Somebody get that car off the track. That is dangerous. Barney Ward is all over the place once again. As Bernfart Jr. has managed to open up a gap over the rest of the field. And uh, he just put 19th place Ian Elias a lap down, so... It is an absolutely torrid pace out there. This is one of the cars that's still on the lead lap. This is Ryan Matthews in 17th place. So a good run for the Matthews Motorsports team cars. Uh, Alexa Lake and uh, Matthews at least. Not going to talk about Focus Auto. But uh, Ryan Matthews having a strong run here today. This team needs it. They're hanging around the relegation battle. They've put a little bit of a gap between themselves and that. But every point counts at this point as Delgado's struggling to get around Ian Elias. He's lost about four seconds to Bernfart Jr. As he just hasn't been quick enough to get around Elias, but he's going to manage to do so right here. And he powers by on the outside and is going to do the same to Andy Lambert, who's in 18th place, having a pretty decent run. As uh, Ramsey Cockner is going uh, to be a nuisance here, and Alex Phillips has none of that, and he's going to 
hook the 69 car, some smoke comes off of the tires, and uh, Cockner has still been all off, just completely off the pace, but uh, at least he's been mostly a gracious back marker. He did try to get out of the way there, but Phillips was just having none of it. As Tom Delgado is going to be the first one to kick off green flag pit stops here uh, on lap 36, pitting from second place. Bit early, I think. Uh, to have cars coming into the pits, but this is definitely a regular stop. They were ready for him to come in. So Delgado pits from second place. Should be expecting the rest of the leaders here any minute now. Alina Lazareva is going to pit that same lap from sixth place. She's having a very strong run here today. And uh, next lap, oh, here comes Bernfart Jr. As uh, lap 37 seems to be the amount that they can go. Uh... 36 to 38 laps, and the rest of the field seems to be following suit as Mark Burt, uh, Preston Bell, Kyle McWell is there. A couple cars are going to stay out, but that's most of the field coming in is going on board with Delgado, and you can see there, he did make up a little bit of ground to Bernfart Jr. as he just came out of the access road. He's just a few seconds back, probably about two or three seconds back from the leader, and it looks like that battle's going to heat up once again if Delgado can managed to keep his nose clean as the rest of the field comes in on lap 38 as uh, Akio Gifu did stay out one more lap and he's going to get a point for leading that lap however coming out of the pits Barbara Burt's going to take an interesting line and Hyuga Hakai is going to get into her turn her into the wall and that's going to be caution one on lap 39 right at the end of the pit cycle so that's going to throw a bunch of cars off of uh, off cycle and trap a few a lap down as going on board with Hakai to see what he saw. Burt swerved to the inside and tried to merge back up in front of Hakai. Uh, that was a bit bizarre. But that's going to screw over Akio Gifu, Barbara Burt's teammate who was stuck on pit road and would, uh, I believe, be trapped a lap down, which means that Kale Burnfart Jr. leads, but there's currently only nine cars on the lead lap right now. Uh, Delgado's in there few other cars in the back that managed to stay on the lead lap but under 10 cars on the lead lap uh, only by lap 40 Akio Gifu is trying to catch up and get his lap back and he's going to run into the back of Ian Elias uh, oops and uh, Scott Wollen for some reason runs into him and that's going to be the end of the day for two of the Double B Motorsports cars within one lap as James Hewitt runs out of gas under caution he tried to stretch it he didn't make a green flag pit stop, and he's going to run out of gas and need a tow back to the pits uh, and lose another lap in the process. He did stay only one lap down. Nicholas Cordovos also uh, ran out of gas. However, he would get some assistance from Ian Elias, who uh, they had to take the rear end off of that car after Akio Gifu decided to kamikaze plunge into it. Uh, so Cordovos would stay just one lap down and his gamble would work, but Tom Delgado is suffering a brake failure under caution, and he's going to pull his car into the pits, which means that Cale Bernfart Jr. is the only car that has any real speed on the lead lap left, uh, unless Delgado gets back out on track and stays on the lead lap. Bernfart leads the field down into turn number one, and he's just got a gaggle of lapped cars behind him that are going to serve as a, as a uh, buffer between any of the lead lap cars that are uh, still decently fast in himself, as now we've got the two Lucas Motorsports cars of Joe Craig and uh, Ben Worthington. They've stayed on the lead lap this entire time, and they're up in the top ten, so this is an excellent run for a team that is very close to the relegation battles. We've got a car blowing up near the front, and that's going to be Alina Lazareva, who's running up in sixth place. Lazareva pulls onto the front stretch, blows up, trying to get down, and so that's going to be another caution as Kuga Hakai runs into Ike Durbin, your points leader, and that's going to take the points leader out of the race. So looking at Ike Durbin, he tried to pull low. Kuga Hakai just didn't hit the brakes in time. Takes him into the inside wall, and Barney Ward's going to run into him, putting Barney Ward's uh, lack of spatial awareness to rest here today. Finally, as uh, going on board with Hakai to see what he saw, he just... Uh, didn't pull low enough, got into the rear quarter panel of the two car, and then uh, tried to stabilize himself, hooked him into the inside wall, but 77's going to keep going. And Barney Ward did check up there, and 
just happened to be at the wrong place at the wrong time, but thank goodness that that 15 car is out of the race because he was all over the place. And that means that Tom Delgado is going to be trapped a lap down. So uh, Cale Bernfart Jr. looks to have this one locked up unless he suffers some kind of mechanical failure. But he's already pulling away from the rest of the field on the next restart. And uh, Bernfart Jr., uh, this might save his career honestly, uh, as he's most likely getting the boot from that 51 car at the end of the season. As here's the battle for second place now between Mark Burt and Preston Bell. And we saw this earlier in the race as Bell shoots to the outside of Louis Ballard, and he's going to pass that lapped car. But Preston Bell is having just an absolutely fantastic run. Haven't seen this from him since, I believe, Chicago. And it's good to see that car back up front once again as uh, Franz Bergman is having an excellent run still. He's up in the uh, up in the top 10, doing a great job. All three of these cars, uh, Gaspar de Souza and Tom Wilson, are up in the top 10, and all three are looking to stay up here and just have a great showing. As so is Barry Juveno actually, and Juveno's up in 10th place, just having an excellent run. Uh, haven't seen this level of performance from Juveno in quite some time uh, and this is looking to be his best run of the season as uh, he's ahead of Alexa Lake right now and right behind Tom Wilson he's had some pretty exceptional pace here today as uh, Andy Lambert's in the th Andy Lambert in the 34 blows up Preston Bell gets stuck behind him and it looks like he's gonna play interference for oh he tried to turn him there but uh, that looked like a bad bump as Preston Bell is trying to make sure that the 34 gets back to the pits. That is such a kind gesture from the 75 uh, Preston Bell. He's known to be one of the kinder drivers in the garage, and I think this might be taking it a little too far as he lets, uh, as Lambert lets him go, and he immediately gets hooked by uh, Wheat Farmer, and that's going to bring out the caution. Wheat Farmer goes around, and Hewitt goes around, so as soon as Bell gets out from behind the 34, he gets spun, so maybe he should have stayed behind as uh, ben Worthington takes two tires on his pit stop under caution and takes the lead on a strategy call away from Burnfart Jr., but that's not going to last long as Burnfart's going to pull low and he's going to take the lead in turn one. So uh, Worthington leads for one lap, but it's a, it's a decent strategy call. It was a gamble and it nearly paid off uh, as McWilla now is trying to make a look on the inside for second place and Worthington's going to hold it for now. So Worthington did get some track position out of that, but Mark Burt, under caution, an electrical issue is going to put him out of the race as the team's going to keep that car on pit road and try and diagnose the issue, but he will not see the track again as all three Double B Motorsports cars go out of this race early on, and that is a disaster for that team as they were gunning for third place in team points, but looks like they're, gonna not, they're not going to get that here today as Alex Phillips stayed out under that caution to stay on the tail end of the lead lap, but... That gamble is not going to work as Cale Bernfart Jr. takes the inside and he's going to uh, put Alex Phillips a lap down once again. Phillips running in 7th place right now. We've only got 6 cars on the lead lap. As Tom Delgado still has quite a bit of speed left in that 3 car. They managed to change the brake pads uh, very quickly. And he is working on passing Kyle McWell. He is back up in the top 10. Just having a... Well, not so much a great run. Uh, but he's still in the top 10, so I suppose you can say that uh, he is doing what he usually does. Scott Willen blows up from uh, a lap down, and that's going to be the end of his day. He'd get that car off to the side of the tr off to the side uh, after stalling, uh, so no caution would be necessary for that 16 car. Uh, but the other two Lucas Motorsports cars must be worried about their engines as uh, Lewis Jones is having a good run. Haven't seen him up front at all, really. And he's up in the top 10, uh, just around the halfway mark of this race, blocking Preston Bell. Uh, Barry Juveno, that battles for position. Not sure why he's blocking Bell, though, but uh, Lewis Jones is the top-running Australian motorsports car right now. He didn't qualify very well, but apparently he, they found some speed in that car, as now Kyle McWella is up in second place, doing a great job. Uh, he's shown more pace than a couple of the other drivers who have run second. And uh, this is a career performance for driver of the 52. He kind of got the shaft after Clay Gibson showed that he was capable 
on these road courses and uh, McWilla making a case for that car uh, when we get back to the States. Here's Dan Foray having a pretty strong run. He's up in 13th place running right behind Barry Juvenile and in front of Alexa Lake, so having a pretty strong run for Accelerator Motorsports, who is uh, one of the bottom two teams in the championship right now. Uh, they're really looking for some strong runs, as uh, I can't imagine that Greg Woodard and company would be too proud of having a relegation on their mark as they descend down into the light series. As Cale Bernfart Jr. has a 10 second lead over Kyle McWilla right now, and he is just cutting through lap traffic. He says that his dad taught him how to see the air, and he's really proving that here today as Cale Bernfart Jr., the son of legendary super speedway driver Cale Bernfart Sr., uh, winner of multiple races at Talladega. In, in the 90s, Sr. was a force to be reckoned with, and Jr. is now proving that he can do the same uh, on, on these super speedways. As Alex Phillips' quest to stay on the lead lap uh, failed and failed once again as he has to bring his car into the pits uh, for fuel. Just a few laps before Burnfart Jr. brings his car into the pits as we've got green flag pit stops once again. As you see there, Ben Worthington pit a lap beforehand. We missed that. But Burnfart Jr. brings his car down pit road. And he's going to surrender the lead over to Preston Bell who uh, decided to stay out an extra lap and get a bonus point for that struggling Stephens racing team. That was a good call for them. They don't really have that much to lose. And he's going to bring in the majority of the field the next time by. And uh, slowly bring down pit road. But Kyle McWilla is going to have a very slow pit stop. And that means that he's going to get trapped a lap down coming out of the pits. As you see, the leaders went by right there. Uh, so Kyle McWilla. Oh, we've got a car blowing up. That's uh, John Jefferson in the 55 car. He's going to stop on track. And that's going to bring out caution number four. Uh, about 30 laps from the finish as Frank Azzaretto was on the tail end of the lead lap but he didn't have quite the pace to stay in front of Bernfart Jr. but that would have been neat to see Azzaretto getting a, his lap back uh, but unfortunately it's not meant to be as Azzaretto lays dead and lets uh, Bernfart Jr. go. Nicholas Cordovos would drop out under this caution. Uh, he ran into the back of Barry Juveno and uh, that did enough damage to the radiator to take him out of the races. Uh, looks like Delgado's gonna try to get around Preston Bell here. Oh, they make contact and Bell goes hard into the wall. That's gonna be caution five on lap 101 as Bell goes sideways on the wall. That car is gonna lazily roll over. That is such a tough break for Preston Bell as he was having such a good run. Uh, taking a look on board of Delgado to see what happened here. Looks like they just fought for the same real estate. Unfortunately, they were they had different lines and uh, Preston Bell's braking patterns didn't make things that much better. So just an unfortunate circumstances. We've only got three cars on the lead lap now as it's Burnfart Jr., Joe Craig, and Ben Worthington. So two of the Lucas Motorsports cars, the only Lucas Motorsports cars left in the race are on the lead lap and that's gotta be such a good feeling for that team as they are so close to relegation as uh, Dan Foray brings his car into the pits from top 15 position. That's not good for that team and Jerry Myatt's going to blow up a uh, couple laps down this 969 car is and he's going to try and make it back to the pits but he's not going to have the speed and uh, Jerry Myatt's day is going to end and he's going to bring out a caution here as that car is going to stall on track. About 15 laps from the finish as the leaders were closing in. Tom Delgado, believe it or not, he's done top 10s all season. He actually leads the field in top 10s but hasn't scored a top 5. He's up in 5th place right now. So Tom Delgado looking for this uh, elusive top 5 finish that's uh, been evading him all season. And he's definitely gonna get that here today if he keeps his nose out of trouble. Franz Bergman running up in the top 10 blows up just a handful of laps from the finish. Such a tough break for the German. He was having an excellent performance on debut and I can't imagine uh, that he will be too happy about this. However, we will see him at Cariala and he will be at uh, France. Oh, he pulls into Vinny Focasato there and uh, Bergman's gonna bring that car into the pits. He's not gonna stall on track, but 
Kyle McWulla, uh, best car running one lap down. He's in fourth place. This is an excellent run for this 52 car. And McWulla, this will be his best career run if he keeps it up here. Uh, the 2012 PCC Lights Champion took, uh, took the championship by one point over Alex Phillips uh, with his, uh, with his uh, family team, no less. So, McWulla, shame he didn't get a seat in the Cup Series this year, but it looks like he's uh, showing that he deserves one as Cale Bernfart Jr. just using the lessons taught to him by his father. He has an absolutely massive lead late in the going, and uh, he's pulling away, just having such a great run. Burnfart Jr. is, and this is probably going to save his career. He, His career was dead up until this point, and he just doing all that he can. Barry Juveno, same here, up in the top 10. Uh, heard some rumors that Stefan's Racing may be keen to drop him as soon as we return to the States. So Burnfart Jr. driving for his career here, up in the top 10, just got some rear end damage from being run into by uh, Nicholas Corradovos, but that hasn't stopped him. Oh my goodness, that's a wreck. Caution seven, just a couple laps from the finish, which means that we're going to a, to a green-white checkered as Lewis Jones and Duncan Cobb, that wasn't even for position, but Jones just cleaned out Duncan Cobb in turn number three. Both cars would drop out of the race. Uh, that was a bit ridiculous, as looked like Jones just completely blew that turn, and Yep, there goes Jones and Cobb into the wall, right in front of Juveno, which means that the race would end under caution. Cale Bernfart Jr., Joe Craig, and Ben Worthington would be the only cars to start the green-white checkered, as uh, this seems to be little more than a formality, although they might have something for him here, as, uh, no, not quite. There goes Bernfart pulling away. However, it looks like we might have a battle for second as uh, Bernfart Jr. drives off into the sunset, leaving Craig and Worthington to their devices. Uh, yeah, this is a foregone conclusion at this point that Kale Bernfart Jr. is going to take his first career win. Man, Bernfart Sr. would have loved to see this. Such a shame what happened to him. As Bernfart Jr. takes the white flag, and coming around through the final few turns, Kale Bernfart Jr. This is going to be a popular win back home. Popular win here. The crowd's going nuts. Is coming through the final turn. Kale Bernfart Jr. Yeah, buddy. He's going to take his first career win at the Euro Speedway Lausitz. Taking a look at the rest of the top 20, Ben Worthington managed to get around Joe Craig late in the going to get second place on that green-white checkered. Kyle McWell, a P4. Best career finish, he was the first car to miss the green-white checkered, and hallelujah, Tom Delgado finally gets what's been evading him all season. He gets a top five in that number three car. Tom Wilson gets sixth place and a strong run for that team. Alexa Lake, P7. Don't think that team was expecting such a strong run from her. And Alex Phillips makes it all three Johnson Racing cars up in the top ten. An excellent showing for that team. Barry Juveno, P9, Stephens Racing, uh, avenging... Uh, Preston Bell getting wrecked by Tom Delgado late in the going there. And Frank Azzaretto rounds out the top 10 in a strong showing for that ROG Motorsports team. Ryan Matthews gets P11, almost a top 10 for that uh, for that Matthews Motorsports team car. Sapphire Anderson and Josh Marshall didn't talk about them all day. They ran very quiet races to P12 and P13. Gaspar D'Souza fell back late in the going to P14. He was up in the top 10 for a good portion of the race. Kurt Pliskin, P15, and Greg Woodard. Didn't talk about them much, but they had pretty strong runs. Brian, Gallagher's, uh, Brian Gallagher went under the radar all day and finished P17. Kuga Hakai recovered from being involved in the first cautions to finish P18. Daniel Sharp stayed pretty quiet all day in P19. And Louis Ballard rounds out the top 20 for Manicore Engineering. And now taking a look at the point standings, Ike Durbin's points lead drops down to 37 points. Feels like this is deja vu after that lights race. Uh, over James Hewitt, who had a tough week today. Tom Delgado moves up to third place in the standings, just six points back from James Hewitt. Ben Atkins, P4 on 389. Gaspar D'Souza's fifth place in points. Uh, he managed to jump up a couple positions. Mark Burt, 
tough day for Double B Motorsports as he drops to 6th in points. Ian Elias is 7th. Brian Gallagher is 8th. Sapphire Anderson up in the top 10 in points. And Louis Ballard just 2 points back from Sapphire Anderson. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer had a rough day today. He was P11 in points. 1 point back is Nicholas Cordovos in 12th. And just 2 points back from him is Duncan Cobb in the 79 who lost a couple positions here today. Barbara Burt, P14, drops out of the top 10 in points. Josh Marshall, P15, having a pretty strong season. Andy Lambert is P16. Tom Wilson jumps up into the top 20 in points. He's P17 in points. Daniel Sharp is having a very quiet, very consistent season in P18, sitting on 317 points. Alex Phillips up to P19. And Kurt Pliskin makes an appearance up in the top 20, sitting on 307 points. And finally, taking a look at the team points, the top six has remained the same. However, Johnson Racing has moved up to seventh place in the team standings. Clayson Enterprises sits P8. Nicecock Racing has fallen from seventh to ninth in the standings. ZMT is up to P10, or should I say Matthews Motorsports team. And ROG Motorsports plummets from ninth to 11th in the standings and sits only nine points above Lucas Motorsports. So we may have a relegation battle yet.